Hi, this is Mary from The Daily Sew. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to take in a t-shirt with a standard basic sewing machine and in a way so that the seam won't pop. Now you can also do this method with a polo shirt, with a knit dress, or even with cardigans that are just a little too boxy. Now what I mean by the seams popping? Well, a knit garment will stretch and then it recovers. And this is what makes it possible for our larger heads to get through the smaller neck hole. Therefore, the stitches that you use when you make or alter a knit garment also need to stretch and recover. I'm gonna show you that stitch. It's a one that you can find on any basic sewing machine, but there are some adjustments to be made to the stitch to give it some stretch. We're gonna do that and some little tips that will make sewing knits on a standard sewing machine a lot easier. So if you're ready, let's go. All right, you're gonna need your t-shirt. You're gonna need some pins, scissors. You're gonna need something to mark the fabric with, either like a chalk marker or a water or air soluble marker, whatever your preference is. It's nice to have a curved ruler, either a French curve or one that is a design curved ruler that has the marks on it. But really, you just need a ruler. The curve is nice, but not necessary. You're gonna need thread to sew your t-shirt with and then needles. You want needles that are meant for knit fabrics. So preferably a jersey or a jersey ball point needle is what you're looking for. And then you have to look for size. A regular standard t-shirt weight would take a size 80 and a tissue weight t-shirt, something very lightweight would take a 70. Size is important or it will chew up your knit fabric. So make sure you have the right type of needle and the right size of needle. Now we're gonna put the t-shirt on and find out where we want to take it in. So kind of pinch it on the side and do both sides so that it's even that you don't aren't pulling all the fabric to one side or the other and see about how much you wanna take it in. And then notice from how far up from the bottom it needs to be the narrowest and kind of make a point or take a ruler and go ahead and measure it. Okay, t-shirt off, inside out and laying on your work surface. You want to try and get it as flat as possible. If you have a shirt with side seams, those can be handy. I have no side seams. Or sometimes you have twisted side seams, and if that's the case, just take your time, try and get it as flat as possible. It takes a lot of time here. Once that's done, you're going to go ahead and measure up to your narrowest point. Mine was about 11 inches up from the hem, and then I wanted to take it in about one inch on each side. So. I measured up 11 and over one and put a mark. That's your narrowest point on your t-shirt. Now you got to figure out how you're going to taper on and off of the t-shirt starting from un the underarm and the hem. And this is where a curved ruler can really come in handy. It just, you can lay it down by eye and get a nice tapered line, kind of like an on-ramp to the narrowest point. So line it up by eye and get find a pleasing curve, slightly curved line. And if you have a ruler that has marks, you can kind of see what number is near your narrowest point so that when you transfer this mark, when you do this mark on the other side of your shirt, you kind of know where to start. It's, it's handy. So you might want to make a note of that if you have a ruler with marks. Then figure out uh, your off ramp here. Again, a nice, gentle, pleasing curve there that comes to the edge. And we're gonna put it on the other side. Mark up from the bottom where you wanted it narrowest and then over. And then get your curves in there. And sometimes you have to tweak that curve. Mine got a little angular there. So not a problem, just do that. And then let's um, go ahead and put the pins in. You put your pins in over the seam line there. And that's because you want as much fabric as possible when you sew here. You don't wanna go ahead and cut this off. You wanna sew it first, 
because the more fabric you have, the more stable the knit is on your sewing machine when you sew it. What I mean is by stable is it won't get sucked down under the throat plate. So go ahead and pin over your lines on both sides of the t-shirt and let's take it to your machine. So on your machine, you're gonna pick the standard zigzag foot, I mean zigzag stitch. Zigzag on a standard one is wide, 3.6 millimeters on mine, and, and it's uh, short, it's a 1.5 millimeter stitch. And this is what it looks like. Okay, it's a good stitch, except that it pushes the fabric uh, out of the way. So we want to go ahead and make the stitch a lot narrower. We're gonna make it one millimeter wide and we're gonna make it a lot longer, 2.5 millimeters long. Now your machine might vary, but basically you want a long, narrow zigzag stitch. And there is the long, narrow stitch next to the standard. You can see the difference. They both have good stretch and recovery. It's just that the zigzag stitch, the standard zigzag stitch, really forces that top layer of fabric. And you can kind of see the little indent there on the fabric. I should have made that stitch longer so you could see it better, but there you go. There is a third stitch that your machine might have and it's called a three-step zigzag. And it is made with three stitches to the right, three stitches to the left, three stitches to the right, et cetera, et cetera. And here it is. If you use this, you do wanna make it longer and skinnier. And this is a super strong stitch. It's really good for seams, especially if you're taking in a knit dress. It could be very helpful where the hips are, where it's under some strain. So remember, zigzag stitch, make it skinnier and make it longer. So our standard zigzag stitch looks kind of like that. And we want for knits, a long skinny one. Now let's go over some tips for sewing knits on the standard sewing machine. First and foremost, needles. Very, very important. You want a needle made for jersey or stretch fabric. And then think of the width. I mean, the size of the needle. If the needle is too big, it's gonna push that fabric down into the throat plate. Plate. So you wanna look for a size 80 for a standard t-shirt weight fabric. And then if you have a tissue weight fabric, you want a 70 or a 75 for your size. But always a ballpoint or jersey needle for knit fabrics. The next tip is your seam allowance. On this particular thing, taking it in, I've got a narrow seam allowance at the beginning and then I get a wider seam allowance. And the reason I don't cut it off is because the more seam allowance you have evenly underneath the presser feet, the less likely the needle is to push that fabric down into the throat plate. So leave your seam allowance on when before you sew, cut it off after you sew. The third tip is the presser foot itself. So the presser foot, this is a standard one, and the feed dogs underneath here are not going to be pushing the fabric at the same speed. They try to, but because it's knit, the knit stretches and it will stretch, of course, toward you because that presser foot will push it toward you. And then when you get to the end, it's even or it's off. And this is why the um, narrow zigzag stitch can really help as opposed to the standard zigzag stitch. But still, if you have a walking foot or even feed foot, you might want to use that or a non-stick Teflon foot or a roller foot. Those can help evenly feed the fabric through the sewing machine. Now let's get sewing. So first I'm going to, um, with the hand wheel, lower the needle down into the fabric really close to the edge. And I'm right now I'm right underneath the underarm on the left-hand side of the inside out t-shirt. So I've laid, lowered the needle down into the fabric and because this is where it can get pushed down into the throat plate, I'm gonna hold those thread tails with my right hand and hold them, I'm not going to tug on them too hard, but hold them gently to, to the back to keep the fabric from getting pushed down into the throat plate. And that's just to get started. Then once started, I can let go of those tails and start sewing. Now, you shouldn't sew up your pins, but I did there. Then when you take out the pins, something I'm not doing here, which I will do on the other side, is I really should be kind of, with my left hand, pushing the top layer fabric up to, to, to the back because that presser foot is bringing it forward. And when I get down to the end there, 
it's a little off. So right now I'm just fiddling with it and I'm pushing it, that top layer back so that they're even at the bottom, at the hem. Then lower your press, presser foot again and continue on sewing. It doesn't do it too bad with that narrow zigzag stitch, but it can happen. You want to keep an eye out for it. Then you're going to ease off the fabric. You're going to come very close to the edge. And then do a couple reverse stitches, back tack, and you're done. And that is how it looks. Very close to the edge. Then the other side. And here you'll see as I um, take out the pen, I do with my left hand kind of push up the fabric, that top layer of the t-shirt to get it to be even, the two layers to be even, the top and the bottom. And then now we're done sewing it, we're gonna remove our marks because if those go in the washer and dryer or any heat source, they're permanent. So make sure you remove them. And now we're going to trim the seam allowance, just ease on and cut about it um, a quarter inch wide seam allowance. And don't worry that it's still folded down there at the beginning and at the end. That's okay. It won't show when you're wearing it. Okay, other side trimmed. And you're pretty much done. The wet marks, of course, will dry and you can give it a pressing to make those seams nice and flat but you're done. Here before we had a little boxy shirt and now we have some shape to our shirt. Nicely done. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this and you found it helpful. If you have any questions, please put them in the comments below and I'll be sure to reply. Thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.